I'm uh, not only director, but also a member of the Economic Board of Utrecht. I'm a director of uh, uh, Floridata, it's a foundation that shares data in flowers and uh, plants. And I'm CTO of uh, uh, Advanced Programs, and I'm uh, also responsible for breakthrough projects in big data <coughs> for Ministerie for Economic Affairs. Big data. First, I will be a quick introduction on how I look at big data. Uh, of course, the first wave was internal data. At telcos, it's called detail records. At banks, it's ATMs and credit card transactions. At retailers, it's points of sale transactions. At utilities, energy companies like Aliander, it's energy metering. And at dot commerce like uh, Bol.com, it's clicks, streams, and social media interactions that are the core internal data. And of course, the second source, the second wave is us, social media and, and uh, a trail of our, all, our own activities. And the third wave, even bigger wave from data perspective, is machines, mobile devices. Sensors are getting cheaper, every machine gets an IP address, and uh, you get an, an interconnected network of machines called Internet of Things. What's big? Uh, in, in the Dutch marketplace, if you have a two terabyte database, it's huge. If you're, for instance, Spotify or Google, a hundred petabytes is nothing. And then you have to do other things. A relational database management same system of two terabytes is large and 12 terabytes even larger and it's very difficult to manage. So you have to look at different solutions as uh, our previous speaker explained. And this is a terabyte and this is a petabyte. And if you're Google, you have hundreds of them. If you're LinkedIn, the same thing. So you have to do different things. Definition. Big data is describing storage and analytics of large and complex data systems, and it's fast and valuable. A warning. If you look at CRM systems of data warehouse, I show a lot of bar large data warehouse products or CRM system projects fail. Too expensive, out of control, too difficult, too large to manage. And now we start big data. It's even bigger. And we think we can manage. It's very interesting. So I can assure you that a lot of big data projects will fail for that reason. That's the same reason CRM and big data warehouse projects failed in history. So how can you avoid it, big data? Pay every cash for everything. Do not play online games. Probably no, nobody of you does that. Avoid surveillance cameras. Never use toll highways. Don't pay tax, because the tax department is here, so don't pay tax, avoid that. Don't use a telephone or smart TV. Of course, Bob.com don't use Albert Heijn bonus cards cards, don't fill any online questionnaire, stay indoors, and never go online. That's the easy thing. That's the way you avoid big data. Never leave your house, of course. I want to take you to Osgor at the Atlantic coast, and I feel the pounding of the waves, and I feel, feel the little uh, salty droplets on my face. And the Unconscious surfers get taken out of the water and a trauma helicopter takes off with the surfer. My wife stands beneath me and says, Eric, you don't have to go in. But I want to go in because the waves are big. And these are the sizes of the waves, four or five meters. And there's a lot of work. And if you are not successful, you're being washed. And I'm sure you, if you do a big data, you will sure be washed. A lot of work, and you see me falling down four or five meters. And you do a lot of work to take that 
last wave, or the big wave in beneath the, the, the uh, shore. And if you look at this wave, you, you are ready to jump and take that wave. You look down and say, oh, that's four or five meters down. I take another one. I'm too old for this shit. Of course I am. And this is the same thing I, see, I speak a lot of companies. They're afraid to take the next step. Of course, if you're Ball.com or, or, or Spotify, you're in it. But a lot of companies see the promise of big data. And what's the promise of big data? Is targeti- targeted, localized, personalized services. And beneath that, detailed insight in customer behavior, predictive and real time. And the other thing beneath that, process automation. If you have a lot of data of your processes, you can automate it better. In the end, on, the, on top of it, you can change your business with big data and run your business with big data. But there's also fear. Fear to embrace new technologies. Fear to adapt legacy information. Share valuable information with other internal companies, but with other companies too. And maybe if you have your big data servers online, you, have, you damage your reputation and have to tackle privacy problems and uh, trust issues. So that's point break. If you go back in history, this uh, was an IBM machine, Deep Blue, that won from the chess master Kasparov. And that was easy, because that's calculating all the combinations on the checkerboard. But now, a few Months ago, a student from London built a chess computer that learned itself chess based on a neural network. And it made use of a million initial board uh, configurations and learned itself chess. And within 24 hours, it's on the the top 22.2 number of the players. So that's a different ball game in calculation. Other example, already a time ago, was uh, an algorithm uh, used by uh, Google and that learned itself to recognize cats. And that's also a neural network. And that was not for the faint-hearted. You needed 60,000 processors, 10 days, non-stop work. And a few months ago, Facebook did it 30 times faster with 10 to 10 times less training data. If you look at the essence of big data, you could see two examples. One example is if you do massive online courses like Coursera, you have 4 million students doing a course, you can recognize 200 students who make a mistake who make a a, a way of thinking that's that's, uh, a mistake. If an audience like this, I only see 0, 0.0 students, so I don't see the mistake. And that's dealt with large data. Another example, T-Systems and BMW did a long time ago. If you measure, for instance, all the sensors of this car, and you see that for the 601th time, a brake system shows the same pattern, then you know it will break. We're now at the phase that your uh, app can recognize pictures better than yourself. Sometimes humans are better, sometimes the algorithms are better. If you look at um, the the functionality of big data, we started 30 years ago, we had just numeric data. We are now in the phase that we can deal with textual data. Translation computer, recommendation answer, sentiment analysis, typical textual data. And we enter now the era when we can do everything with image. That image recognition gets so strong that we can recognize everything from pictures and video images. And this I will skip then. Thank you very much. (music) Thank <music> you.